today, I don't know if you can hear me, I can't be bothered to take my earmuffs or sunglasses off, but as you all know, a while ago we bought the Hacky Pilka Falcon 35. Now, I did a review on it that was, you know, at the time I felt it was a fair review, but when I've sort of assessed everything, I thought, well, it doesn't actually show you it working. So, and if I wanted to buy a machine, it's all right watching some bell end standing there saying, oh, this, 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 but you want to know how it works. So, here we are. Now, I've got this bit lined up. It's about, I'd imagine that's probably eight to nine inches in diameter. This, it will do bigger than this, but this really is, really it's the maximum size you want to be putting through it. Anything bigger than that, and you start having to sort of, you know, you start having to use a bit of muscle to maneuver it. So that really is, you know, I would say nine inches diameter, probably 10 inches is the absolute maximum. But obviously the, the size of that hole, I'll show you in a minute, it fits in there easy. But, you know, um, I am at the moment cutting them into the IBC cages. It takes, if you're not mucking about filming, if you're just working, I'd say it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fill a cage if you've got all nice straight long wood uh, the bits i'm putting through i've been going now about uh, i would imagine i've been going 25 minutes 20 minutes say 20 minutes because i've been mucking about with the camera i top this cage up about here a few more logs in there and i've done all of that so as i say i've been mucking about with the camera but um the speed if you want it for speed then yeah it's absolutely wonderful um just quickly all that crap on the old processor it didn't have the um conveyor cleaning system where it's just literally up the top there the little bits fall down in i'll have to stretch it show you fall down in there and they come down the conveyor belt and out there. That is a great design because you don't get all of that in your um, in your truck or, you know, you still get the odd bit, obviously, but anybody with a process low straight into the truck knows exactly what I'm talking about when you get the mess the other end. Um, the conveyor, that, I haven't actually got it going very fast. Um, odd thing is, on here, like it's got a plus and a minus so you'd think if you turned it clockwise it would go quicker it doesn't watch what? clockwise to slow it anti-clockwise you can have it zipping around that's about top speed there but i don't know why you would have that you know that is ample but probably the happy medium is that the logs very rarely get jammed up on the conveyor, but the only slight issue I have with it, I mean, obviously you could rectify it by lifting it up off the ground, but I don't know. Probably if you have it set up in one place, that's probably best to have it slightly lifted up off the ground, but the conveyor under there, the amount of crap that gets caught in here is unbelievable. I don't know how you could do away with that, I, I admit, but it's annoying. Anyway, I'll show you how this bit, I'll put you down somewhere. I might put you on the big um, tripod and I'll show you how, uh, how to cut this massive bit. So, we actually have this log deck, the metal log deck, which is a homemade thing we bought for I don't know what it was, 300 quid, I think. I don't know, I can't remember. And it has got a, a roller on the end, which is actually quite good, but 
the roller isn't connected to any hydraulics so it doesn't actually make any difference but obviously if it was connected to hydraulics it would chuck that wood in there but I didn't get the hydraulic attachment set up with the Falcon because the chap on the phone said it was an extra six grand and I thought are you kidding me are you kidding me noise but I'm doing the best I can just slightly wobble it a little bit sometimes obviously it's sometimes it's a lot harder than than, um, than just a slight wobble other times you can get it to go like that it's a perfect example sometimes it's harder to wobble <coughs> When it grabs it, it grabs it and it's brilliant. So if I just put you here, you can hopefully you'll be able to see through the cage. So it does take that bit. That is the interesting thing. It, it takes a bit like that and it will gobble it up. But when you have massive bits, you really, really the straightest bits possible. I cannot express to you enough that in feed conveyor that sucks the wood in. How brilliant that is. Like, I'll show you, I'll put the camera down here. You won't be able to watch the log move, but this handle here controls everything. So you move it to the right, sucks it in. Uh, I've got a knot. So basically, obviously, the blade, the bar, doesn't, the chain doesn't fly round as soon as you go down. So you, it has to have a little bit of clearance, but there is a way around it. It's in through. So I can cut through that knot, but the knot that that just cut through that knot there quite a big knot you just cut straight through the middle of it I think. but yeah this this um this lever sorry it's not very straight this lever literally you can do everything with it again Another good part that you're going to see here is lifting that up because even with a six-way splitter on, I've got a six-way splitter bar, logs need to be pushed back through. It's part and parcel of logging. That's what I mean, big bits are time pushing. If you have to start pushing logs back through, it's a bit of a pain. The good thing about that conveyor is I've just stopped the conveyor because there was a big log. That one's a little bit too big for us. Other people may do logs like that. Our customers don't like them like that. So I'll just show you in here exactly what I'm doing. You know, you're getting big logs like that. Too big. You know, some like that, I, I let the odd one go through, but in truth, they are far too big for us. So it just means whipping them out, and they have to go back through. So I load them up in here, like that. Turn the conveyor back on, and then a, a push with this lever, So, the splitting action and everything, you can't split it with the cage up. Safety so there's that bit, look, that's perfect, that's done that, because now I can show you the power of the splitting round. 
so I've just put a couple of bits in there. The thing I do like about it, on my first hacky peel for the 0H60 or 67 or whatever it was, the, this bit down here was small, so you could only pretty much get one log in it. This one, you can load it right up, as you can see there, it just pushes it all straight through. Excellent. It's lovely and job done. But, you know, this is a perfect example of a bit of wood. It's a big bit of ash. And even with a six-way split, all right, fair enough. I could do with lifting it a little bit higher. But really and truthfully, I'm only saving myself a little bit. Massive log going up there. I can't be asked to stop it. Sometimes we have customers that do like these sort of bigger logs, but majority like smaller. So yeah, that's a big bit. I've still got the rest to cut. Um, I'll show you a little bit more in a minute. So before I turn the uh, processor back on, I thought. I would just show you a little bit about, I've just had a quick change of setup. So this will be the first time that I have used it and cut into the dumper. My plan is because we do, when we started off logging, um, I may have said it before, we used to just do nets to my dad's friend. Then it progressed into loose loads and now we have a couple of two or three shops we supply uh, with nets so and obviously the campsite i would imagine in a year we perhaps do between five to ten thousand nets i don't know i don't know something like that probably oh uh, i say between five to ten I mean, you could probably narrow that, narrow that right down to between five to six thousand, but I, I really don't know until I sort of until I look. But um, it's roughly around that figure. So obviously that's well, I mean, probably some people watching that's nothing, but to us it's quite a lot. Um, they all need bagging by hand. We all do it by hand. They all need cutting by hand or by the machine. So that's what we do. But the processor is going to be used just for the loose loads. No netted logs. My game for this winter, I don't want any netted logs done by this processor. The reason being our Quattromat cuts them the exact same length. So does the processor, but only if I push the bit of wood uh, to the metal, to the metal, um, you know to the measurement there but obviously sometimes i'll have a bit of wood that goes there and is about there so it's not held by this so obviously it's not the same length so i mean it's not a massive problem it's just you know because we've not got this set up in a designated place i would rather use the quattromat and the splitter for bags this for loose loads so you know, I'll try and show you a bit more of it in use. Try, I'm trying to think of what things people would like to see. Um, I don't know, the, the sawdust outlet, I mean, it just blows it out the back. It's all around the tractor tires, but yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to look. I'll get some more footage. The camera is only, yet again, that battery has got one percent. Talking about speed of things, but what I would say is it does the job very fast considering all I'm doing is standing there with my legs crossed, leaning on it, 
all on one hand. You know, if you are used to chucking logs about and working really fast and working really quick, you could probably use a machine like this to think, oh, that's slow. Sometimes, you know, in speed, sometimes you can't teach um, manual labour and doing it really fast the old way, but you know it when you get home. You know, I mean, if I'm good enough to reckon, I could do this, especially teaching every day, just standing and I wouldn't be knackered. So, you know, that would be my biggest review of it. It is easy. My biggest, biggest thing. Hilka made, made this machine very easy. The recommendation from the Uckham lads is I do actually like this machine and I do actually think it's worth buying. So basically I had a thought today to finish off this working review of the wood processor. Um, I've got to do a truckload of logs for a customer this afternoon and she only wants sort of she wants smaller logs so I think I'm gonna just perhaps do seven eight inch logs perhaps eight inch logs I think I'm gonna do um, but what I thought would be a good idea though I'm not gonna do it was I thought oh I could do a real-time video of doing the cutting the logs and then I thought well to be honest it could take 15 to 20 minutes to load up the truck and not that I've got many fans on YouTube but I thought I don't actually think any of you would really want to spend 15 minutes watching me cut wood into the back of the truck because you know it would literally just be like real-time viewing unedited so I'm not going to do that but what I will do just for the purpose of a test is we will when we start up I will put the camera on the so that we can see the time on my phone and when I finish or when the trucks loaded I'll put the camera on my phone again as long as I remember and that will give you the exact date or the exact time even of how long it takes to fill this truck up with the Hacky Pilka Falcon 35. Now I know lots of people will be, you know, watching this. Some of you won't be subscribers. Hang on, I'm just reversing underneath the convert. Some of you won't be subscribers, but what what um I know you all, everybody, all log cutters work at different speeds. I, I completely understand that. So what I'm going to do is, with the setup I've got here, I will process the wood and everything into the back of this truck. My guess is it's going to take me between 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna say 18 minutes to fill this truck. Could be quicker. When Dad was alive, and years ago we had the Hacky Pil Pilka OH60, I think it is, or 67, I can't remember. The two of us filled the truck up 15 minutes. That was the quickest, but it was long logs. With shorter logs, it will take longer because obviously you're gonna get more logs in the load. Um, so let's see. Let's have a look at how fast this machine can load this truck. So I'm all hooked up and ready to go. But I just need to change the length of the logs, which is this thing here. There's a little pin under there that you pull out. Pull that pin out and then I'm thinking we're gonna go we're gonna go there. It's short but she wants short logs. And then we 
literally it's just a case of putting that back in pin back in and job done so we are actually we are now ready to cut logs i've got the conveyor oh don't you hate that when you're ready to load and then you realize you've got crap in the truck so i'm going to empty that truck i did have a fault I thought to myself because i'm still going to be trying to get you some footage so with this test do we do we bear in mind that i'll be mucking about with the camera you know do we say well we'll have to take such and such off for the camera or do i just do it and do the time i don't really know i think we're just i'll do what i gotta do i'll get a bit of footage with the tripod so that you can see I won't muck about too much with the camera because then it makes the test completely irrelevant. That's what I'm going to do. I thought it might be relevant to show you what um, RPM I have the tractor at. So this Ferguson is probably around about 120 horsepower, six cylinder engine, and it copes comfortably, more than comfortably, with this processor at Three hundred and sixty RPM. Right. So the time is half past eight. And yes, I am listening to talk sport. So let's begin. can't lie that took at least 20 minutes longer than what I thought because I thought between 15 to 20 minutes I did have um, it cost me two minutes on the conveyor out a bit jarred but even then 38 minutes to fill this truck I didn't think that was that quick what I should say is they are little logs. They are. They are small logs. Like that could be seven inch logs. But when they're when they're that small, it does take a long time. But at the same time, forty minutes. Forty minutes. I'm surprised. I am surprised. But also, it's mainly all ash, and that ash is hard today. I don't know whether I've just hit a real season batch at the moment. But it's rock solid for that chainsaw to bar to get through. And even splitting bar sometimes was sort of causing a bit of issue. But yeah, I'm surprised. 40 minutes to split that. Hmm. Anyway. There you go. That's the Hacky Pilka 35. If you want to load a truck up inside 20 minutes with short logs, don't get that machine. But um, no, for us after the amount i've used it now for me the key thing about it is the easiness of use like i've loaded that truck up all right it's taken me 40 minutes but i don't feel knackered at all i've done is pushed a lever and i think that's where you benefit so you know if you want a machine for easiness that's a machine if you want a machine for speed i mean i still think it's quite quick but i know a lot of people work different you know lots of log people cut 
different logs and do different things and their idea of speed is different to my idea of speed which is absolutely fair enough that's what makes the world a good place is that everybody's different so um that's all i hope you've enjoyed the show remember ladies and gentlemen the only way is up the only way is up see you all soon